Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to Let's Talk Gaming. In today's episode of Let's Talk Gaming, we have a very special episode. We're going to be talking about eSports Wales, my link with eSports Wales and my recent experience of being an amateur eSports player, all coming up right now. Okay, so like I said, welcome everyone. Um, to start off with, eSports Wales. They are eSports in Wales, very straightforward. They are very much an organization that are growing from the grassroots level to the ground up. They're quite new. I think they've only been established about two or three years. Quite funny. The guy who runs uh, eSports Wales, Slayer John, he lives literally two miles away from me. I randomly stumbled across him about two years ago on Twitter. We got talking in DMs and he was like, oh, I live here. And I was like, oh my God, I live here. And then I was asking him, where is eSports based? I thought it was based in like a building. Uh, and he says, I work in sort of Merthyr College, I do like esports and stuff like that. But however, it's uh, across all of Wales esports and they're looking to, to grow grow the scene uh, with esports. They do like courses, you can do like foundation courses in these colleges and stuff, which sounds amazing. I wish I could do that. If I had my time again, I was younger. I would definitely be looking to do that, I think. Um, and you, your, your sort of career options are you could be a professional player, you could be a professional coach, uh, you could be a caster. You could be like a video editor, a graphic designer. There's lots of different avenues you can branch out into if you do like esports. So that's quite cool. Um, so that's my sort of situation of, of esports itself. Um, and then last year, so around January 2021, um, I was going to compete in an esports Wales Community Cup tournament. Now, Community Cup tournaments, something that they started doing last year. I think it, I think that was the first one. Might have been or might have been the back end of 2020 actually. Um, and that's to focus on the, the growing community within Wales and getting people to take part in these events to get better, to grow as a as a player, as a coach, etc. And to do well. Now, Esports Wales themselves, they have multiple teams in different fields. So they have a, an Esports Wales Valorant team. They have a Rocket League team. They have a, a FIFA team and lots and lots of different teams that they have membership in, basically, participation in. Um, Rocket League is something they got a couple of teams in, I think. They have not just the Esports Wales team themselves, which is like the national team, but they've also got like other teams. Uh, I think it's Esports Wales Aya and Esports Wales Tan, which is basically Ice and Fire. Uh, Panda, funny enough, has just ordered herself the Aya shirt because it looks amazing, like the, the blue and like the black and stuff on it. So we'll show you that shirt when she uh, when she eventually gets her in the post. Um, I've got myself the original Esports Wales shirt before they change it, the white one with uh, Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales in the back, and the badge and everything. Looks cool, but anyway, that's beside the point. Um, the point is that um, they have different teams in different fields and stuff. They don't actually have one for Apex, which is quite interesting, although I think they're trying to grow that scene, possibly. But going back to where I was, Rocket League last year, January 2021, I was going to participate in this tournament. I got asked if I want to play. I was like, yeah, I play Rocket League. Um, things didn't quite line up that way. I didn't participate because um, it, was, it was me, my friend Tom, and my friend James. Now, me and Tom... I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, and he'd probably admit it himself. But me and him are not the best players when it comes to Rocket League. We're we're very mediocre. We play for fun, play for you know, chill. Uh, the highest level I've ever got in Rocket League is gold, like rank wise. Um, and I've never got higher than that. I've also haven't put enough hours into Rocket League to to warrant sort of going to that next level in, in competition and stuff like that. James is completely different. James Carmichael, he can flip his car, ball bounce, do all sorts of stuff. And he's like diamond, I think now or platinum, one of them. So certainly he would be well in his rights to play in those kind of tournaments. Me, maybe not so much. Uh, but things didn't line up anyway. Uh, I couldn't play in it because we had, on the same day, we had work going on in the house. We were having our kitchen done at the same time and everything. Things didn't work out and we ended up pulling out of it anyway. So that was that. And that was the last sort of interaction I had with these sports of Wales or anything like that. Now, over the course of 2021, from that moment on, more or less, um, I played a lot of Apex. I was really into Apex Legends to the point where I'm an Apex Legends nerd. I like watching the trailers, the lore. I collect all the pop vinyls. I play constantly with my friends. Um, Panda's playing with me. She's now playing Apex Legends as well. We're on the Boiler Room Pack server playing with people all the time. We're playing with Yidsma, we're playing with Key, we're playing with Kahuli, playing with Rex, and you name it, we're playing with all these different people. <sighs> Stop the breath. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's just good fun. And I feel like with me, I'm a, I'm a fan of esports, the spectacle. Um, I started watching PUBG esports a few years ago. I watched the Nations Cup, which was amazing to watch. Really good a spectacle to watch on stream, on Twitch or YouTube. Um, I remember a player called Uber, who was a Russian player, who was like insane. Like his, his skill level was off the charts. And Russia ended up winning the Nations Cup. I think like South Korea and Malaysia or somebody were like second and third. And then Uber ended up joining FaZe and they had like Fuzz Face and HC and people like that who were like really good top level um 
top level uh, pro players basically in in PUBG. Um, I I watched that scene for a while and and found it really fascinating. I kind of lost interest in PUBG as time went on though, and then Apex kind of filled that void. And like I said, after the last year or so, playing Apex nonstop and, and getting used to it, and also watching the Apex community scene. So with my link of sort of my interest of, of esports and, and and Apex, and obviously being Welsh, obviously all these things align. The match won't be coming to this weekend, just gone now. And this was on the uh, 28th, was it? 28th of January, 29th? I can't remember. I think it was the 29th. That weekend, anyway, that Saturday, at 6 o'clock it was, um, I got asked in the week if I would want to participate in this tournament by Slayer John, who is the, the guy that runs Esports World. Also, for clarity, he's, uh, he's the organiser, he, he um, owner, CEO of esports wales they, they had him and one other person as paid employees they now have four paid employees who work for this organization i think they get um funding from the welsh government but then they also get a load of volunteers to help out organizing running these tournaments stuff which is fantastic so well well done to them it's amazing um so anyway i ended up um joining i, I she said yeah i'd be interested in, in playing no problem let me just see if i can get a team together and, and we'll enter so I asked my friends, and eventually we were able to sort ourselves out and get a team. Uh, Cucumber and Kahuli joined me, and three of us together represented the Buddha Room Pact in, in this tournament, which was amazing. Um, I told him that, and he was like, great, what we'll do is bump up the Welsh teams. And I didn't know what it meant at the time until the tournament took place. So basically how it works, Apex Legends, teams of three, trios, 60 players in total, and you, you need basically... Um, be on the shortlist to get in so uh there was like 40 teams that wanted to play like entry wise but there's only 20 spaces to get your 60 players and to get your, your 20 teams because i'm welsh we literally were guaranteed a place in this tournament and with other, with three other teams i think swansea masters was one of them which is a legitimate esports team in swansea by the way um and a couple of other teams that, from wales as well which is which is amazing so we're like four teams four of us were like they locked in to participate in this tournament meaning there were 16 spaces left for the rest of the people to fight over and it's on like a first come first serve so you're on the list as long as you're on the list you're there ready up and, and you're sort of there to go um you're in the tournament and then if someone drops out there's like a waiting list and i think there's like nine teams on the waiting list so if someone dropped out somebody could take their their place in this tournament so that was um, intriguing to see behind the scenes. They use a website called Challenge Mode, which is a really good website, by the way. Um, every round, they will po post a link to the custom server that you're on. Um, at the end of every round, you must post your results. They can post results for you because they have all that data themselves. But to save time, they do appreciate it if you can post your results. And you can put a screenshot to support it if you need to. Um, on one occasion, we actually put the wrong result. I think we were like 13th and we actually put 12th by accident. And there's another team put 12th, but then we, we you can edit it and rectify it, which is fine. But obviously, if we didn't do that, then they might have to look into that and themselves and edit it themselves, which causes a bit, a bit of a delay on things. So that was that. But the, the website itself, the way they run it and stuff, the way you get the codes, it's done really well. What was nice as well with me, Kahuli, and um, Kukumba, we went on Kahuli's server. We didn't have to go on their server, which I wasn't aware of at the time. I thought we might have to go onto their server and use one of their rooms. We don't have to, so that was good. We're in a locked room on our own servers, basically, chatting with each other. We had six games in total, like I said. Uh, three were on Stormpoint, and then three were on World's Edge. The Stormpoint matches went a lot better. Um, first match in, not really knowing what to do, and this is completely different to regular Apex, where you know, you're know on a server with 20 teams on it in regular Apex and pubs. You drop a fragment. 10 teams get wiped out within 10 minutes or 5 minutes and you, you see round 1 is closing you look up and there's like 9 teams left or, or something ridiculous it's like oh my god the half of the lobby's dead already and then you run around for ages trying to find a team but they've all just died at the start so and then you end up getting to the final ring you, you run, run around with blue shields and or something and then you come across a, a squad that's got like red shields could just wreck everyone and it's like oh I hate this game that's like the usual PUBG experience um on 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 a PUBG PUBG public experience of of Apex they were correct myself um so to see um to see the um the tournament unfold the way it did was great i like i said i watched a lot of esports so i knew roughly what it was going to be like with the ALGS style and that means that everyone drops and they literally drop into every different region or or point of interest on the map meaning that a lot of the time you'll drop and not have a fight and then everyone sort of working their way into the middle of the ring so you can get to like ring three of the ring or ring four and still have like 10 squads left and, it, and a round will take the full like half hour rather than be done in like quarter an hour, 20 minutes. So 
It's a lot longer. Uh, it's more of a, like an attrition of war sort of thing. And people because you're getting points for placement as well as kills, people are a lot more, you know, do I want to take a fight? Don't I want to take a fight? Sort of thing. So that's that's always interesting. That's really good. That's one of the things I enjoy about it. We played our first match on Stormpoint. I think we finished twelfth in our first match or thirteenth or maybe fourteenth. I think. No, it was fifteenth. I think it was fifteenth. I have to go back and rewatch it or something. But it was fifteenth. Um, two squads died. I remember us saying. I remember me saying just before we died. I was like, "Oh, we're fifteenth now." Um, I was like. Um, we're guaranteed a point. We're guaranteed a point because of that. So that's good. At least we're at least we're better than than the teams that died before us in our first round. Because I was aware of like the scores and trying to work out where we were and where we sat there all. Um, but then literally out of nowhere, a team had popped up. There's a team that should drop my my bubble, throw my ultimate to try it because the the Gibby ultimate's great because even though it doesn't always do damage because people can just sort of avoid it and stuff, it will create a bit of a barrier so a team can't push you or you can't push them, or, or you can use it to sort of, you know, they stop them pushing you and sort of retreat back, which is why I was trying to think when I was doing it. And obviously the Gibby Bubble End is great if you want to duck in for cover so no one can shoot you or kill you at that moment in time as well, which is great. So Gibby is really useful. He's picked by nearly every team in a LGS style, which is why I went with him in the end. Because I, I thought with Cucumber and Cooley both being a better Apex player than me, I wanted them to be the legends that can do the recon, do the push in, that kind of thing. I'll be the, the support. I'll, I'll dome shield. I'll support the team that way, and, and I can always drop an ultimate. So that's what I was thinking with, with my Gibby. Um, then we got down. Cooley got down first. Me and Cucumber were running back. I didn't have my bubble card used it just then, so I had to wait like 15 seconds or so. So I remember saying, oh, I can't bubble yet, or, or something to that effect. I've, and I actually recorded every game. I recorded every game, so I will put some clips and highlights of the whole tournament up at, at some point on the channel. When I get time to edit them, but um, <laughs> Cucumber goes into the building, shuts the door, locks me out basically, and then I get down. And we're laughing about it. It's like, oh, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. It's like, it's fine, it's fine. It's probably my fault. Don't worry about it. And then, and then Cucumber runs off, and we're like, yeah, you go, you go solo. Try and get points. The whole squad just chases him, and is watching it back on the stream because it's like a ten minute delay on the stream. So we're literally in the lobby waiting until the next match, and then everyone's like reacting there and then after it's already happened, which is quite funny. Watching it back and just seeing a whole team just chase after him and, and down him was hilarious. He had no chance, basically. So that was the first game. Things improved a little bit over the next two games. Um, I think we got higher than 15. I think we got like 13th or 12th or something. And then the highest we got was 11th. And that was a great round because we uh, we went to the one of the shacks um, in the tournament. This is the highlight of the tournament for me, by the way. We go to one of the shacks. Um, teams with us, fights us. I think Kahuli got knocked. One of the years got knocked. I'm dome shield in. One of them, who's only just picked up a gun, hasn't got much ammo, is literally in the doorway trying to shoot me. I'm just going boop, 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 like that. I can't see with the door. Just getting them wasting all the ammo. Every time they go to shoot me, I just shut the door on them. <laughs> it was really funny. And then I dome shield then to, to sort of control the space within the hallway, which is a good thing that Gibby can do with that. Because they can go through the door and push, but then they start shooting when they think they, they've got you. And then they hit in the bubble. So it's, it's good for that. I'm melee on one of them, down them. Kukuba's finishing one of them off, and we end up winning the fight. And it, and it was great. It was such a good fight. I think Kugba had all three kills. I had a couple of assists for it. We don't the dome shield I can get Cooley back up. And and we're looking good. And we like I said, we finished eleventh. Um and we got quite a few points for that. It's a point per kill. So at the end of the three matches on Storm Point, we had six points. Um and the the commentator actually said with that Gibby Bubble in that fight, he was like, um, someone buy that um someone buy that that man of beer. Uh, what great play by him then with Gibby or something to that effect he said, which I'm gonna find and clip on this channel because I'm not to, not to brag, but I'm a I'm a first time esports personnel player in this tournament who's not used to first person shooters. So for me to get a bit of praise from the caster, I'm like super super thrilled by it. So um yeah, that happened. That was great. That was, that was really well done and everything on on their part and and our part for the fight and everything. We end up losing, getting getting downed and everything later on, which was a bit of a shit. Um and then when the maps changed then to World's Edge, I thought oh. We got a chance here now. World's Edge. We play so much World's Edge over the last few seasons and stuff. We got a good chance. We agreed to go to Fragment, everyone's favorite place on World's Edge. Go to Fragment, and I remember we would, we would we were descending onto one of the buildings, and Kahuli's like on the one side, on the other side. We we look left, we look right. Like no squads with us, but we should be fine. We knew the other squad went to the other side of Fragment. As we dropped, literally a second before we hit the ledge, we went shit. There's a squad with us. They must have been right above us, and we just couldn't see them in our sort of peripheral vision. Nelly, one of them jumped down. We're all jumping and everything to get get away from him. They get in guns, but getting guns quickly. Uh, Kahuli gets knocked. Cucumber gets knocks one of them, and 
Kahuli's already placed a gas canister on like the the top of the ledge where the the zip line goes up, um, which is great. Kukuba's killed the wraith, I think it was. He's got like most of his health gone. His shields are gone, like half health. I think he's got like a vault or a devotion, one of them. He really he literally wrecked the wraith. It was great to see. Any other player that come up would have been down by him, but it was a fucking core stick that come up. Who was immune to the gas gets gets him down, and you're thinking, ah, oh, what's what's happening now? So then, um, I'm literally in the two v one. The Corsic drops down the ledge. I'm down the bottom, getting again a gun. As luck would have it, I get a gun, but it's a P2020, not really the gun I wanted. So I got a P20, which I hate. Um, it's such a use, use, use I, I wouldn't say useless because you can get, get people, but it's not what you want in this situation. The Corsic pushes me. Kuka was telling me Corsic. I'm, I'm like bang, bang, bang. I literally down. I knock. I knock the Corsic. I get the knock. So it's, it's it's two knocks to two knocks, one one each. I'm I'm left. One of their players are left. I've got like that much health. And I've got hardly any ammo left of my P20. I'm literally hiding behind Cucumber, his uh, shield, to try and get it, aim a few shots. There's no time. I couldn't get a shield swap in. I didn't have any heals. I literally couldn't do anything apart from take the fight. In hindsight, maybe I could have tried to escape, but then I would have just been an easy target because I would have been about back to the enemy and they could have just hit me with one shot. And what happened was I think it was a bloodhound or somebody come down the stairs. Cucumber says, stairs. I literally turned bang. I'm down straight away. And, and that was that. And that was disappointing. And the thing with World's Edge was we, we had six points on Storm's um Storm at Storm's End? No, I can't remember what's called now. We had six points in the first three matches on that map. Storm point, there we go. We had one point, one solitary point on the three on World's Edge. And that was like the gutting thing. I felt like we could have got a few more few more points, maybe if maybe if we got a couple of kills or if we got a bit more more placement, that would have been great. And it's weird because I'm I'm not disappointed. I mean, I suppose I am a little bit, but um, I felt like we were a match for some of the people in the tournament. We were very unlucky with some of the places we landed. We like I think two or three of the matches we ran around for ages with, with white shields, and it's like bloody hell, we're fighting against squads here, which which already got purple and red armor, and we're literally white shields, or one of us will be like a blue shield or something. We're trying to take fights by you, and we're just not prepared for it. Um, it was it was crazy how quickly the fight would happen and and you'd get wiped. It's like what happened then? It was like it was like that. I was like whoa, I, I'm I'm dead. <laughs> Where did that come from? They were so good. The level was, but there were certainly teams in that tournament that we could have matched or even done better than. And like we finished sixteenth in the end. So out of the twenty twenty teams, we finished joint sixteenth with a couple of other teams. Um, but then I think tenth place was like twenty points. So you're only thirty off, and that's one good round really. That's one good round where you get. I know a much higher placement, maybe top five or something, and you get maybe a couple of kills. That's that's all there is. That's the that's the difference. So we could have easily got up to to the top ten or even nearer to the top, top maybe seven or eight places. I think the top six teams are really good, and every time the results were being posted, it'd be like, holy shit, that team that finished third had sixteen kills. You know, it was it was insane. It's like, oh my god, the team that finished fifth actually had twelve kills, and in that in that one game, not overall, just the one game. So. It was like a, it was certainly the, first, the top five or six teams were really really good enough there, but I, f I certainly felt like we were good enough to get into that top ten bracket. And like I said, if we had a bit more luck and we had one maybe good round where we got a couple of kills and had a higher placement, we would have got up there. But certainly for my first ever esports tournament, it was amazing. I would recommend it if you're into sort of this kind of stuff. So with esports Wales, like I said earlier, they don't have a um, they don't have a esports Wales team. They don't have a team that goes into into Apex. They do in other fields, but not Apex. But they use tournaments like the Community Cup to see what players are coming through, what sort of good plays there are from people, um, and then I suppose they make a decision. And if they if they feel like they can get players together, enter as a team, and play in competitions and like the British Championships and stuff like that, then they they do that. But yeah, that was um that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you've enjoyed this little insight into esports Wales and my first experience in this tournament. Like I said, I've recorded all six matches on OBS that I played in, uh, with my team. I'm not going to upload the full matches, I don't think, because I don't know if it'll be worth watching the full video, but I might just put them all together in one video and just see the highlights or something. Uh, we'll sort of go from here. Anyway, guys, I'm a Drown Hart. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.